I think when people think of this lifestyle, they romanticize it too much. I think everyone imagines these big tables filled with fresh picked fruits and vegetables and a picturesque scenery and a stress-free environment. And while, yeah, sure, maybe the end goal is to be that, people too often skip the process. See, a simple life may include those parts of what you're imagining, but it ultimately isn't that picture in your head. A simple life is the hard, dirty work that sometimes doesn't pay off. A simple life is the 15-hour workdays without a warm shower at the end. A simple life is inefficient and tiring. A simple life isn't for everyone. And quite honestly, I don't even know if it's for me. But that's what this adventure is all about. I am on a journey of self-discovery, and I honestly don't know if I'll ever see the end. I have no backup plan, no way out, no safety net. Failure to me is not an option. The following video is the culmination of a month's worth of struggles and failures, and I hope you're able to learn from it even half as much as I did. I wanted it to be cinematically beautiful, but I just didn't have enough footage for that due to lack of electricity, so I hope you enjoy it even as it is, and I promise the next one will be better. So without further ado, let's begin. You see, my journey started after three days of travel through five different states. I had brought six poor chickens with me in my cramped vehicle, and I couldn't help but feel terrible for them. So after spending the morning carrying my stuff across half a mile of rocky terrain over half a mountain, I established three goals for the day. Set up a perimeter, set up a chicken playground, and set up a small garden. Now at the time, I did think that they were reasonable goals, but boy was I wrong. For the perimeter, I would brought with me the makings of an electric fence, so I spent some time marking where I wanted to put it, but a quiet voice told me to build a shelter. Now I hadn't planned on making a shelter, but it's always a good idea to listen. Okay, it looked like rain, so I went ahead and built me and the chickens a shelter. Just in case it does rain, it'll keep things, at least my electrical equipment, dry. So I'll go ahead and move it in. Wow, and not a second too soon. As you can hear, it's raining outside. What a shocker. This was the first of many setbacks I'd encounter. I just got everything in, and now it's raining. That's pretty neat. Okay, the rain's let up just a little bit, so I'm gonna go shut the windows on my car because I stupidly left them open. I'm not looking forward to this. Though it rained, I did manage to set up the electric fence. Goal one, complete. It was late into the day, so I made some supper and just went to bed. The following morning, I realized my power source was non-existent, and all of my recording equipments were dead, so much to my chagrin, I had to go into town to get some power. This would be a constant battle for me until my backup solar setup came in, so forgive my lack of footage on a lot of things in the first two weeks. But now that I'd wasted half the day, I figured I would start making a coop for the chickens. So I cleared the area and got to work. Or so I thought. I'm trying to film this dang video and these chickens just will not stop trying to escape, so I did something that I'll probably regret and I let them out. I honestly felt so bad for the chickens that I thought if they run away, then I deserve it because they deserve better. We'll see how this turns out. But to my surprise, they stayed. They actually stayed a little too close. All right, chickens, get out of my way. As you can tell, the chickens were very excited for their coop and I was equally excited to work on it. The materials were from a hole I dug where my garden was to go and eventually I stuck a stick frame in to help with stability. All right, would you just move for like 10 seconds? I'm trying to work. And then wrapped it with chicken wire to temporarily keep the chickens safe at night. 
Now, I spent several days straight building this, and it seemed like it was getting nowhere. I was sick, exhausted, and many mornings I was too sore to even move. I kept getting bloody noses randomly, and it seemed like the more that I tried to work, the less that I got done. We were only about a week and a half in, and I hate to admit it, but depression started to sink in. So I called one of my friends, and he encouraged me to take a day off. The following day, a video was due, so I took that as an opportunity to slow down and do something that I wanted to do. After going into town to edit and post the video, I took a nap in my hammock and read a bit of a book. Near the end of the day, I'd realized my friend was right and I'd made a good choice in calling him. Now, let me explain something to you because I think it's really important. Before beginning this journey of self-discovery, I'd asked five of my closest friends to call me at least once a week to see how I was doing. In turn, we would encourage one another and keep each other accountable, but I also asked them to take the responsibility of pulling the plug if they felt it was necessary. The reason I did this is that humans in general tend to be blind to things that others think are blaringly obvious, and I wanted to make sure that no matter what, I wouldn't wind up dead because I was too focused on something unimportant. At any point, any of the five could tell me to return to civilization, and I would have to. And because of this, I wanted to make sure I was honest in my communication with them, so despite feeling depressed and defeated, the fact that the five thought I was healthy enough to continue gave me a lot of strength. So, revitalized, I started anew. I put the chicken coop on pause because it was supposed to rain, and I wanted to get a better shelter that would actually shed the rain, so I began to focus on that. Somewhere along the way, I stopped locking the chickens up at night, but despite that, I really hadn't had any problems with predators, and I think that's mostly because of the electric fence. Oh, right! I can't believe I forgot! A few hours after setting up the electric fence on the first day, a black bear ran into it while I was trying to start a fire, and here's the footage of that. Dude, I have to get this fire going before night. Unfortunately, where the video cuts is where my phone died, which is why I angrily went into town the following day. In the trailer, I show this footage of a black bear, but since it wasn't footage that I took, it felt like I was cheating if I put it in. But just knowing that the electric fence worked gave me a lot of confidence in my safety. Anyway, back to the shelter. So it looks like we just need like no, three long ones and then no, two not quite long ones and then that should be it for our basic shelter. It didn't take long to build it and before the rain I had it up. Okay, so the shelter is pretty much established now so I'm going to spend the day, uh, since it's supposed to storm today, I'm going to spend the day kind of working underneath it, digging it out, making it better. I built it in a way that I can improve it over time and that's what I plan on doing. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. By now it was about two weeks in and I felt fairly confident in my ability to survive. I hadn't gotten a garden in, actually I hadn't finished any projects yet, and I'd encountered so many setbacks, but I was in a rhythm that I thought would lead to victory. And that is when Friday rolled around. And you know, despite all the setbacks, things are actually coming along pretty good. Friday marks the end of a week for me, and this Friday was no different. I went into town to edit and post a video on this seemingly bright and uneventful day, and then returned to camp somewhere around noon. Little did I know that my world was about to fall apart. As soon as I arrived, clouds rolled in, and within a few minutes it was pouring rain. Now, it rained for a good half hour before... It could be very bad. It is hailing like golf ball sized hail out there. This um, was really an unexpected turn of events, and unfortunately it wouldn't be the last. It's puncturing holes into the tarp. This could be very bad. This made me realize more than ever that I had to finish this shelter, and fast. Spring is the rainy season, and if I couldn't last this one storm, how could I last the whole season? Uh, this reminds me of two things. One, I really need a better shelter. And two, it reminds me of my very first day when I said, 
I think now might be a good time to invest in a raincoat. But on the plus side, I don't know if you can see it, the chicken coop seems to be doing fine. I was cold, tired, and soaking wet, but I had no choice but to continue working. I was still trying to keep some semblance of my future plans, but I wasn't focused on using every resource like before. The sun began to set, and I thought the worst had passed, but that's when it all began. So I was just trying to put the chickens away, and that rooster, man, he lands a solid blow, and it like, it made me fall over. My knee really hurts. So I'm gonna go clean up. I think I'm done working for the day. Ow. This attack was devastating. My whole leg hurt and would buckle whenever I applied pressure. I knew the rooster was a jerk, but had I known he had poison in his talons, I would have never taken him. After putting the chickens away, I washed up and gave up for the day. It had been a rough day for me, and at this point, all I wanted to do was curl up under my covers and read a good book. So after treating my wound, I made the three-quarter mile trek back to my car, painfully, slowly, but surely. Okay, we're back in camp. It took me almost half an hour to get here. What chicken? What? Look, I don't... But we're gonna book it on this shelter like there's no tomorrow, so just pictures for now. Even just watching the footage, you can definitely tell I was pretty agitated. But despite that, work progressed well over the next few days. So this is everything I was able to get done in a day. Uh, it rained all day yesterday, and this is all that I have to show for it. So I did the math, and if I'm able to keep up this pace, I should be able to get this dug out in about 17 days. In fact, it progressed so well that I was feeling confident enough to start a garden of potatoes. Okay. We have these potatoes I've been holding on to. They've gone to seed. So I'm gonna cut them up and throw them into my uh, leaf pile. It's like the, uh, the Ruth Stout method. Except with potatoes. Now, I really didn't care if these potatoes grew at all, but I figured I would try to establish some sort of garden before the end of the month, and I did. With another project completed, my low spirits rose and I felt like I was really hitting my stride. Hang on a bit. Check this out. From here, I don't know if you can see my finger. All the way down to here. And then, whatever you see on this wall. I did that all today. Nice. Not only that, but my quality of life improved by the day. Well, I tell you, now that I can finally do most of the work standing up, my back is feeling much better. Much better. Ergonomics is something they really don't talk about in this lifestyle, but I think it's vitally important for success. Anyway, after getting the back wall post in, I started building a stone retaining wall in hopes of holding back some of the water and also just cause it looks cool. Okay, so the center beam is what makes this whole thing work. And I need a central support for that beam because the weight that I'm gonna apply to it is just too much. But, where I need the beam, or where I need the central support to be, right where all of my stuff is. And it's not where I've dug out. It's right, right there.
made so much progress so quickly, but I didn't have enough battery to record it all, so it made me kind of bummed. But good things can't last forever, and another great storm was on the way. I had a torn tarp for a roof, and I was, well, I'll just let the video do the talking. I'm hoping that it works. It's like, it's got about a 10% chance of success, who knows? <laughs> Later that evening, uh, the clouds rushed in, and it rained all night while I was sleeping in my car. Well, can't say I'm surprised. Should have seen this one coming. My house is flooded. And unfortunately, the chicken coop was not spared either. So what happened was the roof leaks directly onto the wall. So because it rained so much last night, it just melted my wall. I'm not gonna lie, this was a really difficult day for me. I spent the majority of the morning just digging a trench to drain my house. I had anticipated some flooding and I was eventually going to build a trench, but I really didn't think that this much rain could happen overnight and that it wouldn't soak into the ground very fast. Yay! There it goes, off into the wild unknown. Okay, well, now we gotta wait for it to drain, which could take a while. <laughs> now, I've tried to maintain a happy and upbeat pace throughout the video because I truly was having a lot of fun and this whole experience was a lot of fun, but in the moment, I was anything but happy and upbeat. I was exhausted, lightheaded, congested, and just generally sick. I remember feeling incredibly nauseous because of the work that I was doing, but, Regardless, I had to continue. I had to get the shelter up that could withstand all this rain. So after draining my house, I started building another wall in a different form. I would put down a layer of mud and then throw some bigger rocks on it, and then another layer of mud and some bigger rocks. And I thought this was a great idea. It added a lot of stability to the wall, but then- I just fell over and not gonna lie, I am incredibly frustrated right now. The chickens just keep getting in my way, everything is going wrong, and I can't seem to even build a simple wall. I'm like, everything is grating on my nerves, and I don't know if I can make it the whole month, I'm not gonna lie. I just am so frustrated, I'm so tired, exhausted, and I just want to go home. Like I said, I was anything but happy and upbeat. I fixed the wall, cleaned up, and then just sat there feeling absolutely defeated. This was the first time I genuinely wanted to be anywhere but here. And I think a lot of people who showcase this lifestyle on YouTube try to avoid moments like these in their videos because it really just doesn't sell well. But it's important to know that everyone has countless days like these. It's perfectly normal to feel this way, and in this lifestyle, it's not how you feel that matters, but how you react to that feeling. I had the option of giving up on my dream and moving back to my comfortable 9-to-5 job, but after some rest, I kept moving forward because this is my passion. You see, failure to me is not an option, it's inevitable. So I continued moving forward. I called the five, and they all told me to return to civilization. I asked if I could finish the month, and they said if I could finish my shelter and the chicken coop, they would consider letting me stay through May as well. The following week, I made leaps and bounds of progress on my shelter, and I felt incredibly confident that I could finish before the month's end. I was having much more fun than I had all month. I made pottery, I took a day here and there just to meander around seeing the sights, and as the end of April approached, I realized I realistically wasn't going to finish on time, so I thought if I had to leave, I may as well leave something behind. But three days before the end of the month, a storm came that would destroy everything I had worked for. It's most certainly not rain. Well, it looks like it's cold enough that it's uh, sleeting. So I came to my car to uh, charge my phone a little because I had you know 20% battery left. I forgot my raincoat and then it started pouring rain and then I found out that we are in a tornado warning. 
So, uh, the rain has kind of slowed down a little, so I think I'm going to try and run back to my house. Okay, note to self, don't forget your rain jacket. Ever. And always carry one with you. So the chicken coop has failed us. Well, that's a bummer. I guess with this crazy rain, I can't really expect much difference. I don't know if you can see it, but it's it's flooding uh, everything pretty much. How do you even combat this much water? I just, there's nothing I can do. Uh, huh. I don't recall adding a waterfall feature to my wall. Uh, not gonna lie, I did not see that one coming. Well, now my lower retaining wall is falling apart. Uh, well. get across the stream if I wanted to. And I don't think it's going down anytime soon. Wow. That is a lot of water. Uh, I was thinking about building a dam right here. But somehow I don't think my dam is going to be strong enough to let through all of this water. Holy cow, that's like a whole tree! Uh... Well... Let's go this way. And down there, I don't know if you can see it, probably not, but there's another creek adjoining that, and it's completely full and just gushing out and overflowing everything. Wow, this is nuts. The damage report. The damage was enormous, and not just to my house. The road I walked on was demolished, and there were whole trees swept away. The path I took every day to camp was unrecognizable. I thought I was doing nature a favor by removing the rocks from my camp, but without them, all the topsoil was being swept away. I had to install log and rock berms mid-storm just to slow the massive erosion that I myself had enabled. But despite all of this, my spirits held high. Somehow, despite these ridiculous circumstances, I felt more alive than ever. Perhaps it was because I viewed these destructive elements as a challenge for me to conquer, or perhaps it was just because I had grown. Regardless of the reason, this storm and the elements it presented made me more excited to improve the land and honestly, I wouldn't trade it for the world. I knew I had to return to civilization, so I called the five and laid everything out. One of the five suggested that taking a week away and then returning would be wise, but the remaining four stated that despite me not living up to their quotas and finishing the shelter and chicken coop, they felt confident that I could remain another month and continue the upward trajectory of my emotional health. Out of respect for the one that said it would be wise to return, I asked my family if one of them would host me, and several said yes. I am extraordinarily blessed to have such a generous, kind, and caring family. So in the final two days of my 34 day adventure in the wild, I began to minimize the damage of the storm and pack things up so they could hold their own while I was gone. My neighbor said he would take care of the chickens while I was gone, so once I felt comfortable that my stuff was relatively safe for the week, I set up some uh, experiments, but we'll just have to wait until next month's video because I don't have a lot of time in this one. But just know, next month is going to be incredibly fun for both you and myself. As the final day came to an end, I looked over everything I had done this month and I couldn't help but feel proud. Yes, it was incredibly difficult, and yes, everything I built crumbled around me, but I had survived, and I was looking forward to the following month. Upon return to civilization, I looked at all the convenience that many take for granted and thought, hmm, don't really need those. But I must admit, it did feel really great to trim my beard. My 30 days alone were over, but my next 30 were just about to begin. Now that is a very sad morale. <laughs> I guess you could say. <laughs> yeah. 
he has the low morale. <laughs> If you're watching this the day the video is released, I will be returning to the land tomorrow to make more videos like this. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you're subscribed so you can see them too. Thank you all so much for your support, whether that's financial, physical, or simply by watching my videos. All of your support helps me do what I love while providing you with these awesome videos. I still have over 12 hours of footage that never made it in, so if you'd like to see more of a specific thing, make sure you comment below and I'll see if I can whip up a video. Like I said, I will be returning to the land tomorrow, so you can expect another one of these types of videos sometime in June, but I want to hear your thoughts on what I should do next. I'm pretty new to the filming and editing world, so I welcome any and all feedback. Thank you all so much for joining, and until I see you in the field, happy hunting!